All right, so we'll begin. So this is my wonderful client, Jara, who I'm so proud of and so happy to know. And um, this whole webinar, we're putting it together for you guys to, um, to understand how to uh, go from maybe feeling anxious about connecting with women to really being able to connect freely with women. So Jara has done a great job at this. And, um, and he's used meditation uh, in conjunction with introverted alpha teachings to help him do that. So today he'll tell us how he's done that. He'll tell us his story. Um, he'll tell us um, what meditation means to him, how he practices it, and just kind of give you guys another angle um, on, on the teachings in a way that's really more based in some of the practices and benefits of meditation. So I see that he just dropped off. I think hopefully he's coming back on. Okay, while he's coming back on, he said his internet's a little spotty, so hopefully that won't be an issue. Um, okay, so while he's still making his way back here, I'll tell you guys a little bit about his story and then he can fill in the gaps when he, when he comes back. Um, so he first found us um, almost a year ago in August of 2014 when we were new. And uh, you know he got the ebook and he did the values and factors exercise and um, and he was just you know hearing from us and doing his thing and when he comes back on he'll tell you what was going on in this part of his life at that time and then um, in February he joined First Touch to First Kiss and got to learn uh, the ten step sequence of escalation in there and then shortly thereafter we had a strategy session in which I knew that he was going to be an amazing client and I was so excited to work with him and we started working together in March and um, it's been really really good and his progress has been crazy fast and I think a lot of it is certainly because of his positive um, way of seeing this whole thing and even though he's had some difficulties he still looks at it in a really positive way um, and then also the meditation thing. It's been helping him just clean out mind clutter and be able to focus and relax. So hopefully, Jara, where are you? I see his little icon popping up. Okay, here you are. You're back. Okay, hopefully you're back to stay. I hope so. I hope so. Uh, yeah, of course, as soon as Sarah goes like, oh, are you ready? I go, yes. And she probably hit the go live and I disconnected. So... <laughs> You're back. You're back now. I'm so glad. I just told everyone about how you found us last August. You did first touch to first kiss. We had our strategy session. We started working together in March. And um, so I'd love to hear like your version of where you were at when you found us in August. What mm -hmm. was going on for you in this part of your life? And then just catch us up to speed to, let's say, when we started working together. Sure. Okay. So beforehand uh, I'm sure many of you guys may relate to this but um, I uh, I had one girlfriend that uh, was my kind of my main girlfriend for one uh, very strong relationship very deep relationship but I thought she was the one I thought that's it you know there's uh, you know I got lucky that I found this one she's great and she's perfect and then um, everything kind of fell apart uh, it just ended up not working out for us. Uh, we wanted different things, and uh, it just it was kind of sad, but uh, we decided to split up. So after that, I was very confused, and I went back to my like pre-dating self, which is more like an anxious type of person and uh, feeling a little bit awkward about around women. Um, it was more of uh, more anxiety just in general, just like, oh, I just wanted – them to have a good time around me, but I didn't know if what I was doing was good for that or not. So I experienced like a lot of a lot of anxiety around that, um, not knowing exactly what I wanted. I was very confused about how to approach the whole dating scenario, also because of uh, just beliefs that I'd grown up with, um, like women aren't supposed to be. You're not supposed to touch women at all. Um, so the more I liked somebody, the less I was. <laughs> you know, unless I touch them. So, um, 
<laughs> so that was one thing. Um, there was a lot of confusion just in general about dating and how things are supposed to be. And the way I was feeling, the feeling of really wanting to connect with women, but feeling confused and anxious was just a very bad combination in general. So that's where I was before, um, before I started working with Sarah. Yeah. I bet a lot of guys can really relate to that. And it's just funny. And it's funny now to think about it. It's like, oh, wow. Now you know the first touch to first kiss sequence and how important establishing that initial touch is as soon as you're in rapport, you know, establish some friendly touch. And now you know that that's important. You know why it's important. You know that it's welcome as long as there's good rapport. You know how to tell if there is good rapport or not. And back in the day, you know, that just cracks me up that the more you liked her, the less you wanted to touch her because like, what if that, you know, what if she doesn't like that or you want it to be respectful, like, you know, in quotes, because yeah. certainly it's respectful to touch somebody when you're in rapport with them in a friendly way. But like mm -hmm. you said, oh my gosh, society doesn't necessarily see things that way and doesn't necessarily um, uh, make it easy for you guys to figure out what's what. If you're trying to be a good guy, it's really hard for you to know what to do. So totally, totally makes sense. So there was all that going on. And then when we started working together, I mean, you were just fantastic. Cause I, I love when this happens, you know, in our first call, you knew that you were going to do well. And it took a lot for you to just know that for sure, because you hadn't had that experience in the past. So it was really intense to just know that, but you totally did. You knew that when you set your mind to something, you're going to do it. You'd known me and my work long enough to, to trust me. And me looking at you, I knew you could do it because you're smart, you're earnest, you're open-minded, you're committed. That's, that's all we really need. So we set about our path. It was awesome. And so first thing we did was your values and factors. We went in depth on each of those in our first session. That's what I always do in the first session. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, from there on, I mean, you made progress very quickly. Um, I mean, by session three or four, women were approaching you. It was nuts, like very early. So, so tell us about your first aha moment once we started working together. Yeah, so there, there's a few things uh, I'd like to mention. So yeah, I had, had been following Sarah for a while before I approached her to work with her direct, uh, just reading her emails and I found them very insightful and helpful. Um, I also started really deep in my meditation practice, which is something we'll talk about uh, a lot, but I kind of started combining the two, and I think that's one of the reasons why I got results so quickly. Um, so, uh, so, so then I, I actually bought the first touch, the first kiss program and started doing that uh, a little bit before before we started working. But um, when, when Sarah and I worked, it was like just exponential because I knew that I knew I could get there on my own, but I knew that if Sarah were to hold my hand, like I would just go there very fast and I could go there very quickly just because of what I was reading in her material and what I read in First, first Touch to first, first Kiss, which really helped me. So um, my first aha moment, um, I think I have a couple to share, but the first one was actually finding the, um, the values and factors that were very important to me because that really helped me to set the vibe that I felt comfortable with that I really wanted to, and that was, well, that was the first aha moment I had. Um, and I would say the second very important aha moment was the, uh, the touch and how to work through that process of, uh, of establishing first touch and leading to a kiss and how that builds rapport between you and your date. Totally, totally. So these were realizations that you had and it was part of your, so you're doing this meditation practice, which you're going to tell us about shortly. Mm -hmm. And then that was combined with these internal realizations about your vibe, your values and your factors. And also just being like, oh my God, not only is it okay to touch women in a friendly way and then move to flirtatious as I know that we have rapport and there's interest. Not only is it okay, it's like, they want it, you know, <laughs> like, please yeah. do that. You know? <laughs> so that's good. And then, and then what about like in the outside world, you know, how other people are responding to you 
what was the first thing that changed in that regard? First thing where you were like, okay, people can see a difference in me and this is pretty cool. Okay, so I another thing I changed around this time was that I started going out dancing a lot more. I used to uh, be kind of really intimidated and afraid of it, but I always liked it. So I decided to take lessons. And uh, by this point, I've been taking lessons for maybe about a month or so, about once or twice a week. And I was starting to go out to, to uh, social dancing. And um, the first thing that I noticed people telling me was like, oh, you're very smooth. But I was just doing like, the basic steps, you know? That I was yeah, like, you are. <laughs> So um, I noticed that people felt that way, and also I felt very comfortable, even though I was a beginner. And common, uh, people enjoyed themselves around me just because I behaved more comfortably. Um, I felt more comfortable in my own skin. So um, people were telling me, just giving me comments like, "Oh, I, you know, it's fun to be around you. It's fun to dance with you, even if." We just do the basic. <laughs> yeah, totally, because so was- you were having fun. And so then, of course, they were having fun dancing with you because you were having fun. And you and I talked about that in a session where that the same thing happened with me, too. Like, I didn't know anything. And it would be easy for somebody to get frustrated that I wasn't following their lead. I was, like, awful when I was first starting. Everybody is. But they yeah. still really enjoyed it because I was having fun. And they would always say, well, you're having so much fun, so that's fun. And then same thing for you, like, and as a lead, it works as a lead or a follow because it takes two people to dance regardless of the role. So you having a lot of fun and just being chill that made you really smooth. And plus it's just in your, uh, you know, personality to be that way, which you may not have really known before you were practicing a lot. But once you got out there, you saw yourself in a new way and you saw people were responding to you and you were like, oh, my God. This is really cool. This is already me. Like, I don't have to try so hard. This is just how I am. Yep. That was pretty cool. Okay. So then we'll we'll bring it into, like, where some things were starting to happen. I mean, there was one session. I don't know if it was, like, session four where you came in. You were like, Sarah, I don't even know. <laughs> it's been crazy. <laughs> so there was this one night. Where so there there was a couple of, of major nights that stand out in my mind that you had. So the first one was I think the first time that you no the the very first one um, that you just noticed that, that this woman kind of liked you. She was kind of near you and she liked you. Okay, and then like there was another time like maybe the next weekend where you went out and three different women in the same night you had these crazy connections with. Just run us through that evening. It makes me so excited every time I think about it. Okay. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> these these crazy things start happening, like Sarah said, and uh, uh, yeah, the first one was that a random a girl I had known for probably about ten years now. Uh, she called me up and said she was moving to Chicago where I live, and uh, she wanted to meet up. And so that was the first thing that just was surprising. And then when we met up, she showed a lot of interest, and it actually led through all the steps and it was, I had a good time with her and she had a good time with me. But then um, after that, uh, we we kept, uh, because I'm in a dating and playing stage at the moment, which is really weird for me to say because I've never imagined myself doing it, but um, uh, I decided, I told her up front that we didn't want anything serious. So that's that's where things ended with us. And um, the, next, the next few weeks I, I did go out dancing a few times and that's where things got really crazy. Like it just accelerated from there. Um, it was just like really feeling connection with with this one. Just randomly in a dance floor, bumping into women that were just really pretty to me, and that was just really fun to dance with. And also their reaction, like I could tell they were really enjoying it. And I was following very little suggestions from Sarah that I like really technical things because I. I told her I was going dancing to meet women and she told me kind of, you know, a few technical details about where I should, you know, position myself and kind of how to run my hand through her hair and different things like that. And, and, and also the most important thing was kind of keeping the focus on the fun and the connection I had with this, with these women. So as I was doing that, it was just crazy how, how close you felt to them and how you could tell they were really enjoying the heck out of it. And, uh, 
it was it was amazing. I mean, I'd never, I don't think I've ever been like that before or had like random beautiful women like kiss me on the dance floor like that. It was just amazing. And kissing on the dance floor, that, that's just, I just could hardly stand it. Okay, <laughs> so, so you met a woman, so one night you went out with some friends and they were like, hey, dude, we didn't realize you're such a player. This is crazy. You're awesome. Like, I don't even understand. And I was, I was thinking I was writing about this actually because I'm writing my product right now and I think I actually wrote the story into it. Because I was like, yeah. let me clarify what I mean by player. Because we're not talking about like sleazy, weird, manipulative. We're talking about playful, like playing, happy, where everybody's playing and happy together. Everybody's equals playing and happy, chill. Yeah. You know. So, so this one woman was with her colleagues. They all went out dancing together, right? And then you guys started dancing, and then, so tell us how that went, and then we'll transition into meditation, but I could just listen to these stories for the whole hour. Um, okay, so, so you guys started dancing, and then what happened? All right, so basically, yeah, I, I went to visit my friend in, in uh, Philadelphia, actually, and, uh, uh, and she uh, invited us out to go dancing one night, and she had a few colleagues of her um, with her that night, so... We were just dancing. It was kind of like Latin music, so um, it's the stuff I was learning. So I took one out. And we were dancing, and it just like started getting really close in our dancing and very kind of more of a sensual dance. And <laughs> it's really funny because all of a sudden she she tells me like, "Oh, um, we should go over to that corner where nobody can see us." And I was like, "Okay." <laughs> And uh, uh, when she said that, I knew that, you know, she was interested in, in something like just being more close and like she was, she didn't want her coworkers to see her. So that was the first, the first girl. And, um, and it was great. And, and we, we kissed a little bit and we had a lot of fun. And then she left, uh, she had to go. So she left. And um, I remember one comment saying like, oh, I've never had somebody like dance with me that, that way before. And I've never, I've never had it before. So I remember that comment because it was like, I still f felt at that point like a beginner. I still feel like a beginner and doing it for a few months. But the fact that she enjoyed it that much meant that I was doing something right. I, and, and I thought it's got to be this connection and this focus and what Sarah's teaching me that's really working. So um, that's, that's what happened with that, with that girl. And then she left. And I was just dancing around. And for some reason at that point, um, one of my, my core values is confidence. So um, at that point, she gave me that, that experience gave me a lot of confidence. So I just went through the dance floor. I was taking a ton of women out, just dancing a little bit. Some of them, it was just like a one-off. Some of them didn't want to dance, and that was fine too. I wasn't, uh, at, that, at that point, I was so confident. I didn't, I didn't care. I was just very polite about it and just moved on to the next. And... Um, and then I ended up finding another one, and then I spent. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! That's that's what happened. I spent the rest of the night with her uh, dancing, and it was amazing, and it was this connection again, and we both really enjoyed it, and, and that was it, you know. Um, so that's that story. So amazing! Oh my god! And you know the thing that when you were just telling that last story, what occurred to me that is a really beautiful tie-in to meditation. Like I think in terms of meditation and what I'm excited to hear you talk about today mm -hmm. is really this one aspect that we alluded to earlier where it helps you with your inner game where you're feeling good, you're feeling clear-minded, this is great. And then at the same time, um, it also helps you with that connection. Because every time that I say, hey, you wanna focus, on the attraction that's happening. You want to focus on you feeling attracted to her and her mm -hmm. feeling attracted to you. And I'm always like, oh my God, this is so abstract. What you know, I hope that they understand what I'm saying. And mm -hmm. I try to make it as plain and clear as I possibly can. But mm -hmm. it, you know, meditation helps you just understand. I don't even have to explain. You just understand what I'm saying. You you understand, you know, how to do that. Um and uh and because being you're being mindful, you're being present, you're being aware, and that translates into, okay, well, if you have all that mental space, you can focus it on the chemistry that's happening, okay? Yeah. And then um, and then it just is like incredible. It's an incredible experience for both of you. It's so nuanced, 
but it's not to be underestimated. Because just like you said, the woman that you danced with who was like, I've never had anybody dance with me like that. And you're new. It wasn't technical skill of the dance moves. It was your presence of, and the chemistry that was so intense. And you were not flinching from that. You were present to that. And that translates into your body language. It translates into the, the whole connection that's happening. So mm -hmm. definitely, I definitely think that's been part of why you've been able to adopt that so beautifully and so quickly is because of your meditation practice. Um, so yeah, really, good. really good. So let's let's get into into more about your meditation. So first, let's just start with with what does meditation mean to you? What is your practice like? Okay. Uh, great question. I think that meditation can take a lot of forms. Uh, to some people that practice uh, a lot of different types of meditation, some of them are like where you really concentrate and really focus on something. Some of them visualize. Uh, there's different types of meditation. And for me, what it means is kind of going inside into the internal world and really calming it and controlling it. Because the truth is the external world you can't really control things happen out there but the internal world how you feel inside and your mind and your emotions that's what you can control so um, meditation is about kind of calming the inner whirlwind and chaotic thoughts and any anxiousness that's inside and then from that point uh, creating what you want just kind of directing that intention at that point um, so that's that's what it means to me Wow yeah so it's like you can either put your focus on outside things that you can't control and try to make that an anchor, which is stressful, mm -hmm. or you can anchor in your internal and then through that be able to be clear-minded and creative and confident and then create the results that you want. Yes. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Okay. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, so so what is your practice of that like? Like how do you actually do that? What do you what do you actually do? Okay. So what I do is um it, it's a meditation. Um and what I do is uh the process I follow is I go to a place where I'm not gonna be disturbed for about thirty minutes, which is my my practice. Um I, I just use my room typically and I just, you know, um just go somewhere where I know I'm not going to be disturbed. I, I love it because I'm an introvert, so I love having a place where I can do this and just recharge. So um, it really helps. Um, so what I do is I sit down in a comfortable, just in a chair that's very comfortable, wear comfy clothes, uh, upright position, and then just have my arms rest on my lap with my back straight. Um, you can try meditating laying down, but you'll probably fall asleep, so it's best to sit. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you're doing it like right before bed or right when you get up or something. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then it's very simple. What I do is you just put your attention on your breath. And then when you're breathing in, you think the word so. So it's like so. And then as you breathe out, the word hum. So so hum. And you're just thinking much thinking it as just kind of like following your breath and just kind of watching it. So it's more of an observation, not of anything forcing. You're not, you're not forcing your breath. You're not trying to control your breath. You're just following it. Um, so that's really important distinction. Um, and then I set a timer for 30 minutes. And I basically, that's what I do for 30 minutes, is just put my attention on my breath, follow it, and do the so hum for 30 minutes. <laughs> um, a few things I, I want to say, though, that are important in the practice are that um, so meditation is about replacing your focus, at least for me, replacing like hard focus or concentration with kind of just an innocence, an innocence of just observing the breath, of just repeating kind of the breath. So you're just being very innocent. Um, and you're replacing any hard work that you can think of with just sort of you're totally surrendering to the uh, emotions and sensations they, they will come up but you just it's kind of like uh, the way I see it is as if they were clouds 
and then the clouds just kind of are moving away. So that's just kind of a visual or traffic maybe. A thought comes in just like a car in traffic and it just goes away. And then um, as soon as you realize that's happened, then you just gently come back into the practice of, again, putting your attention on your breath and very gently and effortlessly observing it and just repeating so hum with every breath. Um, there's no expectations. I mean, nothing's supposed to happen. Um, it's just, like I said, just an observation. So you're just a witness at this point. And um, that pretty much about sums it up. <laughs> it's really beautiful the way you describe it. I have heard um, other people describe it. I've practiced it a tiny bit myself, but I'm feeling much more inspired to you because you make it sound so you make it sound so gentle and effortless. You make it sound so doable. I've heard it. I don't know. Maybe I've heard probably like about ten other people mm -hmm. actually explain meditation. Mm -hmm. And what you've said that really stood out to me and makes it seem actually really fun and definitely not boring. I think before I was like, well, okay, meditation's like so intense and official and like heavy or empty or something bad. Mm -hmm. But when you were, and then you cut out a little bit. So I want to clarify this second point that you made because you mm -hmm. cut out at a certain point. So you said um, replacing hard focus with innocence. That yes. was beautiful. And then you said replacing hard work with something else. And then I, I didn't hear what that was. Okay. Okay. So let me, let me uh, clarify that point. So um, in our society, I feel like we're taught a success, a, a kind of a success formula. And very, like hard work plus focus and dedication is going to bring you success, right? Mm -hmm. So the more hard you work, the more success you'll attain in life. But in meditation, that isn't necessarily the case, actually. In meditation, that works against you. In meditation, you replace um, a focus with innocence, and you replace hard work with surrendering. You just let go. Because meditation is about being, not about doing. And that's why it works that way. So um, being relates to your vibe. It relates to how you're feeling inside. It relates to who you're being, so you're being a happy person or a confident person. Um, and doing is, is a completely separate thing. So that's why meditation is really um, uh, very bizarre for a lot of us and very like confusing because it's the opposite of what we've been taught growing up. Totally, because if you think about it, you're like, oh, I'm going to go do meditation. That's like an oxymoron if you really understand what meditation is because it's it's just you're just being and that's different than you know i'm going to go do the dishes i'm going to go write something we're going to have this conversation like that's all like doing 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 mm -hmm. and i mean you still give yourself something to do by like giving yourself mental pictures of if you have thoughts you can see it like traffic i've never heard anybody explain it like that that's really cool mm -hmm. like if you're at this like tall building and you're looking down on these like little cars moving you know and then you can, that's like how it is with your thoughts. And there's not, you're not like, oh, I didn't do a good enough job because you're not doing, it's not about doing anyway. Yeah. You're just, I love this. I'm just going to go think about that really a lot when we're done here is like the replacing hard focus with innocence and yeah. hard work with surrender. That's really beautiful. Did, did you come up with that yourself or did you hear it somewhere? Um, the, the, that, that part, I actually read it in a book, um, that's called Secrets of Meditation. Okay. A great book. Secrets of Meditation. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, the author's David G and he's, he's a great, goes along with meditation, but anything I'm going to talk about here, but, um, I really stuck out to me because, um, it, it makes a lot of sense. Well, that's what's so great about having you tell us because it's like curated, you know, because we're all on the same page here, all you guys that are here with us and we're all here for a reason. We're all hanging out together. So what stood out to you as noteworthy in the book also obviously stood out to me. And then, of course, I'm sure you guys um, watching, it probably resonates with you too because we see things in sort of a similar way and have sort of similar frames of reference, especially those of you that have done the values and factors exercises. Um, yeah, that's definitely. really so good. Super good. Okay. Yeah. 
And then how do you incorporate? I mean, this is a this is, you know, this is your practice. This is this is your your half an hour every day where you do this practice that you just described to us. It's very straightforward. You do that. Yeah. And then how do you incorporate that into introverted alpha teachings and what you've learned here? Okay. So this part is really exciting because uh, I feel like I've really been able to get a grasp on it. So there's there's a few things. Um, one of the things I did, I think, before I worked with Sarah was the, uh, the confidence training. Do you remember that, Sarah? Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's only... It's, I just changed around the site a little bit. So the core confidence training, like I have like a little search bar on the site now. So if you haven't done it, you can just go into the search little icon and do core confidence training. And then you can go to the sign up page for that if you haven't done it already. But yeah, that was early. That was like my first, uh, that was right after the ebook. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, I did exactly. I did it. And actually, um, the interesting part about meditation here is that Sarah talks about seven levels of confidence and how each and uh, the final, the seventh level is, is the level of there's no winning or losing. It's just a, a magnificent game. I think that's, that's the title. And uh, meditation basically takes you straight from wherever level you are to that level automatically. Because think about like kids or, or babies that are just inherently, as long as their needs are met, they're just inherently joyful and happy, right? They're laughing, they're having fun. That is human nature, I believe. And I think um, over time, it gets clouded with just worries and chaotic thoughts and responsibilities and whatnot. But in reality, that nature, I think, is kind of like the sun. We're always there. And even if it gets cloudy, you know, you can just meditate, watch those clouds go away, and then it shines again. So... Um, that's, that's very good because it makes your nature more, more, you feel more confident and that is really attractive, not just to women, but to everybody in general. So, um, that's one point that I really connected meditation to, to the training at introvert alpha. Um, another very strong point is, um, with the first start, first touch to first kiss program where Sarah really talks about. Um, I think you talk about stillness in a hug, right? Yeah. And how being still and present in a hug um, is something that only like powerful people can do because uh, you, otherwise you're like fidgety, you're anxious if you're, you're not feeling confident, right? Um, I think you talk about power, presence, and warmth as being like the main parts of charisma and how stillness really makes all those three qualities better in yourself, right? Mm, yeah, that's true. I forgot I said that, but I would have to agree. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, think you do, but, um, I, do. <laughs> oh, I would definitely, I would agree. I would say that again. I said that then, I'd say it again. That's, yeah. yeah there you go. <laughs> so, so meditation, is, that's all it is. You're bringing yourself present. You're bringing, bringing your mind still. Mm -hmm. you're, you're becoming clear, clear-minded, and uh, you're becoming more powerful as a result, you know. Um, more charismatic, more peaceful, more confident. So true. It's a really good point. You know, when I when I have talked about stillness before, I've I mean, like I said, I've never done a lot of meditation, but I am a little familiar with it. There's things about it that intrigue me, and certainly there's uh, there's other ways of just seeing the world, like we said, from a level seven perspective, which this is kind of jargon. So if you guys haven't done the core confidence training, um, there's like Jara said, there's basically seven levels in which you can see the world. I learned this um, from the Institute for Professional Excellence in Coaching by Bruce Schneider, where I went to school. And um, then I, it's just become my own version and way of talking about it. I think and hope he would agree with the way I'm teaching it now, but I've kind of done my own thing with it. And, um, but I got it from him. And so there's these seven levels um, that you can be at in terms of how you see yourself in the world. So level one is where you feel like a victim. Level two is where you're pissed off. Level three, things are much better. You take personal responsibility for yourself. At four, you care about other people. At five, you're really successful and everything's like a win-win. At six, you're just blissed out. You feel connected to everything. 
And at seven, like Jara said, you're just like, oh my God, this is a miracle. Everything is a total crazy miracle. And every time I've been thinking about level seven, especially lately, I just think about how huge the universe is and what the hell. I mean, it just pulls me right out of my little tiny one out of seven billion people on the earth life because it's a very interesting little movie that I'm in, like the life of Sarah and you're in the, the life of Jara. It's like, and all of you guys, you have, you're, you know, the star of your own movie So in this metaphor. Okay, but look at how many movies are playing and that's only humans, okay? It's only seven billion humans. Think about, did you guys hear that today they discovered a planet that is very much like Earth? It is like very similar in size. It's It has 385 days in its orbit around its sun, whereas we have 365. This is phenomenal. This is crazy, okay? So thinking about stuff like that, it just puts me right in level seven of like awe and amazement and not even present to the tiny, tiny worries that um, are part of like the movie of Sarah at this point in time, right? So uh, so using meditation is another way to access that. So the way that I often talk about accessing it is by just thinking of those things and then it just kind of opens up your mind. This is another way to do it is by just changing this hard focus to innocence and hard work to surrender so beautiful. I'm now curious about that book. If that guy said that, that's so smart. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it's really just so beautiful. And it's like another tool in your, in your toolkit. And I, and it really appeals to a lot of people. Like that's part of why I wanted to do this because you had mentioned it to me a few times. Um, and one time just very outright, like this has really helped me integrate the teachings. And yeah. then, so many other clients that are into yoga and meditation and like I didn't realize that you guys were had this whole side to you as much as you do it's awesome because I have that side too I just didn't know if that would be the best way to connect with you guys but it turns out it, it is in a lot of cases especially with you Jerry you're teaching us so much I love it well thank you Sarah <laughs> I hope uh, it's helpful to people out there but um, I will say one other thing about a more practical kind of combination in with the uh, teachings. Um, like Sarah said, it, one of the first things that, that we did was to find our, our factors and values. And once you find your, your values that you feel really passionate about, then you kind of, one of the exercises that we worked on is kind of repeating those values and looking at that list every day because it's kind of like you're planting a seed and you're watering it every day and then it just blossoms more and more in yourself without without it becomes more unconscious you know it's kind of you're, you're practicing it becomes more unconscious and um, what I did is basically I mixed the two so I meditated in the morning um, get, get out of bed and you know meditate almost instantly then once my mind was very clear and I felt very peaceful I would look at my list and just like was flooded with all this positive emotion from looking at these values that I was like, oh, this is great. And uh, and that's how I kind of combined both of them. So I think that's a more practical it's way. It's a really practical practice. I already tell you guys to review those every day. And especially when I start working with anyone one-on-one. -on -one. And then of course yeah. in the course I'm creating right now, that's like a much more comprehensive view of like all the coaching teachings or as much as I can fit into into product. In fact, more, because there's more hours in that than a normal coaching uh, run because I want to be really thorough. So I mentioned in that, you know, every single day, have these in front of you, put your values and factors. And if you guys don't know what we're talking about, read the ebook and do the exercise. It's so fun. Um, and if you still don't know, you know, email me and I'll give it to you if you don't know where that is. Um, but you can find it on the site too. So you can just put it as like a background on your phone. Um, that's a really good way to do it or just have a list or a sticky note in your bathroom mirror or whatever. But just reviewing it every day and if possible, saying it out loud to yourself in the mirror, like connecting with yourself person to person. I mean, you're still just you. So every time I talk about this, I crack myself up. I'm like, we're not, you know, <laughs> we're not like dissociating or something weird. This is still us. But 
you know, I think this is something that meditation seems seems to uh, reinforce is that we are we are the closest to ourselves that we could ever be to anybody. You know, I can never know any of you at all or anybody that I love most in my life near as much as I can know myself. And the same is true for each of you. You will know yourself more than anybody can know you. So that's amazing because that means you can love yourself more deeply than anybody else can love you because knowing and loving are so intertwined, you know? Like the more I know my boyfriend, the more I can love him because I understand him better, which just gives me so much more compassion and love and respect for him the more I know him. Same thing for myself. The more I know myself, the better my relationship with myself is. So repeating these values and factors to yourself in the mirror, ideally, um, is a wonderful thing to do. And then doing that on the tail end of a meditation, you don't have to do half an hour. You can do 30 seconds if you want, and then go, and then the more you like it, the more it feels good. You can do 60 minutes, you know, 60 seconds, a couple minutes, a few minutes, you know, you can do, there's no rule that like it's all or nothing, zero seconds or whatever 30 minutes times 60 is, 18,000 seconds or whatever. I'm not sure if my math is right, but it's not like zero or 18,000 or 1800. It's, um, it's any, any amount that you want. So if you do that, even just for a little bit, even for like 90 seconds, and then you repeat your values and factors to yourself in the mirror, this was core to Jara's amazing success. So it's not just like, oh, this is kind of a good thing to do sometime maybe. No, this, he, you know, Jara, you have just real, you integrated everything very quickly. It was very seamless. It was very smooth. And, um, and it's because you had this, a lot of it is because you had this practice and you look to that as your anchor instead of like, oh, did this one person say this or did I offend this one person? It's like, oh my God, that can't be your anchor. That's going to make you crazy. It's going to make you nuts. It's just your anchor is, is being and then being you. It's this beautiful thing from being in meditation to then being you with your values and factors and being present to those. It's a really great tie-in. I like that a lot. It's very practical. It's easy to just start doing that. That's what you did every day. But you yeah. did. I, I really did. Yeah, that and it, it really helped because um, it was just building up on the excitement. You know, when when you do this, make sure that when you're reading your values or looking at them, that you actually feel good inside. That you actually either think of a time that when you were actually that confident, confident and very self assured, and something really good, or imagine yourself in a very confident situation, whatever it is you want to do. But um, actually getting pumped up and having that energy in you, that makes a big difference. At least it did for me. No, it so. makes a huge difference. It really does. Yeah, it really does. And so like a lot of guys sometimes are like, well, what if, like I have a client right now who's doing this, um, this journaling exercise uh as part of our work and he's like well what if i don't feel like it i'm like well you know it's a logically smart thing to do we're not doing it forever we're doing it for two weeks just do it you know just do it and then over time you can grow into feeling excited about it um you know but if you is if you have easy access to excitement and passion and you also have you know, at least a willingness to see yourself in this wonderful way, then you can just do exactly what you share, Jared, of uh, get excited and believe and understand what you're saying. But don't let that, but if that's hard for you, don't let that keep you from doing it at all. Don't wait until one day you feel excited. You know, go ahead and do it and be very gentle with yourself. Just mm -hmm. very gently say it. You know, with some of the clients I work with, they're like, Sarah, you know, I, I, I get it in some ways, but I don't know. I feel like I'm just going through the motions when I read it. So then what, what we do is they, when, when I read the values and factors to myself. So what we do is they still do it. And then in our sessions, we recount all the ways that they were showing 
one or more of those values and factors in the last couple of weeks or however long it's been. So for you guys, you can do that too. You can repeat it every morning, whether you feel excited or not. And then what you can do is debrief at the end of the day or maybe once a week. Um, but make sure you're really thorough because you might skip over some stuff. So just think like a detective, you know, okay, where, and don't think of it so personally, just literally think of it objectively. Where did I demonstrate compassion or whatever your value or factor is that you are focusing on this week or today? And really notice something and remember it. And if it doesn't come to you at first, or if you feel some resistance to remembering things like that, because it can be kind of edgy for some guys that aren't used to thinking of it, still do it. Just stay with it, stay with it. And then it won't take any time You'll start getting excited. You'll feel like such a badass. I have one client who this is the case for. It was just our second session because our first session was on his values and factors. He studied those, repeated those every morning, wasn't feeling it though. We met again and he told me that. And I'm like, that's cool. And in the beginning of the call, it was, he was just his voice and his energy was just kind of low. Like, that's okay. People, it can take time for people to feel more comfortable and open and excited, especially if they've been having a hard time. I understand that. Mm -hmm. Then I asked him uh, what's the evidence that he has been making progress over the past couple weeks, because that's one of the first questions I ask um, clients in sessions. And he said, well, there was this thing that happened. And I'm like, really, tell me about that. And he's like, well, this and that and the other. And these women are just loving him. He's Fun. He's found his sense of humor again all in two weeks. He went from like feeling very closed down at work to, to actually moving to a new building um, at work and actually just feeling like a blank slate and like the life of the party and such so funny and so, so um, laid back and happy. And then, you know, started talking to this beautiful woman on his way out of the building and they ended up talking in the parking lot for a long time and she really enjoyed him and she's just this beautiful woman who just loves spending time with him. And he was telling me about this, and this has all happened while every morning he was like, well, yeah, I guess on these things. <laughs> but then once he talked about it, he's like, oh, my God, I really am these things. So he was, and then his voice, you should, you should hear, it gives me chills to remember how his voice changed throughout the call. And we record the call, so I'm like, hey, go listen back to that, because that was amazing. And he, it was, it's awesome. So, again, all I had to say, even if you don't feel like it, Still do it and then think about times that may not occur to you at first, but if you give it some thought, you can remember really cool things that happen that you would be surprised even happened. But it's because you're doing this exercise of your values and factors, especially if you add in some meditation, then super, super good. Yep. That's good. Any more practices? Um, I think that's a really solid practice, not that we need more, but any, any other things before we go to see if anybody has questions? Guys, if you have questions, type them in. I think there's like a little bit of a delay on the question. Oh, here's, okay, so you guys are have like the chat thing and then there's also questions. So you can just ask any question that you want. Um, and we'll see about those. So while you guys are coming up with your questions, uh, Jared, do you have any other things that, that you want to share? This has all been so good. I love all of it. Good, good. Um, well, some of the things I would, I would recommend specific to meditation, uh, it's just remember that it's kind of like going to the gym. It's not instantaneous. Um, I remember the first time I tried it seriously and I had, I was felt very uncomfortable inside because I had a lot of chaotic things inside. So it was very uncomfortable, but it's kind of like a muscle. So the more you use it, the more stronger it gets and the more benefits you see. Um, benefits from meditation are not really felt when you meditate. They're felt throughout the day when, you, when you're in activity. Um, the way I actually make it a habit is I use the following acronym. So I actually try and meditate twice a day, but usually I just do it once. Um, in the weekends, I can do it twice sometimes. So I use the following acronyms. One is RPM, which is Rise, P, Meditate. And the other one is raw. <laughs> R <laughs> it works. <laughs> um, and then uh, the yeah, R A W is right after work. So uh, that's that's kind of how it is. Um, uh, 
to make it a habit that worked for me. Um, yeah, the only other thing I would say is um, uh, just take it really easy. I guess maybe you could you could start out with just 15 minutes a day in the morning, or you can start 15 in the morning, 15 at night, or maybe just once a day to 30 minutes. Just take it easy as you slowly move into it. This would be my suggestion. And yeah, and even less than that, if you guys want to, there's a woman. Um, Melissa Lau, who um, I had the pleasure of having tea with recently, and she had a cool meditation program that, I forget the name of it, but her name is Melissa Lau, L-A-U. And what I liked about her approach was that she said, you know, just 90 seconds a day, it doesn't have to be crazy, just that. And, you know, it's pretty hard to convince yourself, like, out of doing just those 90 seconds. So even if it just starts with something so tiny, um, but just kind of whatever makes sense for you. And then probably Jira, what happened for you is the more you did it, the more you wanted to do it. And now like the whole 30 minutes is just, you know, it feels really good for you to do that every day and to have that nice block of time that is set just for this. Mm -hmm. So if you guys feel that way too, go for it. But um, you know, that's that, that those acronyms are funny they're helpful you know when you just it's just making the commitment to yourself if you feel like this is something that would be really extra helpful because god knows we all have a lot of things we're trying to do i am writing i don't can't even tell you how many words i'm writing in how many short of days yesterday i wrote ten thousand words that's crazy that's like a sixth of a book so you know integrating meditation is something that it is another thing in one sense because something else you're focusing on, but at the same time, it's not something that you're doing in the same way that you're doing other things. You're not applying hard focus. It's more, it's like you said, innocence instead of that. So, you know, you can just reflect after this hangout where you feel like you want to integrate this and on what scale and if you feel inspired to do that and what that might look like. And, um, and you know, taking it up, for the long term, if you feel like that, this we could have a whole nother hangout just on um, being focused on something and carrying through. You know, that's been a really big, pretty cool thing. When I've decided that I'm really going to do something and I've really decided to do it, you can tell when you've made that commitment to yourself and then you do it. You know, like when I decided that regular workouts, a minimum of once a week, like bottom minimum, once, twice, or three times a week. I was going to do that, I've done that, you know? And I'm gonna keep on doing that. And when I envision it, I envision doing that for the rest of my life, rather than just like, oh, let me hit this goal in two months or something. So I think that's what you're saying, Jara, too, is like, think of it as a long-term thing that has this slow build over time. And it's really a leisurely thing. I mean, innocence and surrender and just chilling out, I feel peaceful just thinking about it. We're not even doing it and I feel peaceful. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, cool. So we have a question from Jacques and Arvid. Hey, guys. Um, okay, so Jacques says, Jara, if you could go back in time and talk to yourself when you were first exploring these new territories, what advice would you give to yourself? <laughs> That's a good one. Um, what I would say because back then I was feeling pretty anxious and like I said, I was confused and I felt like, I kind of felt like I didn't even know if it was possible for me to change and, and become a person that would that I am right now. So what I would say uh, is yes, you can do it. And um, through following the introvert alpha suggestions, at least for me personally, I would tell myself, keep following that, talk to Sarah. <laughs> Um, and, uh, and and keep the meditation and the um, uh, the, the affirmation process going because that is really really important. I mean, uh, that to me, I think that's the main thing that made a difference. Really, is just calming all the inside turbulence I had, and then setting my intentions again for what I really wanted. And then, if you don't know what you want, just ask for clarity. Make that one of your intentions, and then through experiences, you'll find out what you want. So that's what I would say to myself. Awesome, yeah. Just knowing, like what I hear in that is noticing what you really resonate with and what feels really good for you to integrate. 
Yes. Especially if we're learning something new, if it feels kind of weird, that's not really a promising path. And really discerning yourself, like what actually feels really good to integrate into yourself. Because when you learn something, it like becomes a part of you. You kind of absorb it as a certain way to see it. Mm -hmm. So if you're absorbing what actually is fully, feels fully wonderful for you to absorb, that's a really wonderful high leverage thing to do as opposed to learning something that doesn't feel as good. And, yeah. you know, and so, and then you were, so you were doing that here and then you were doing that in meditation and then combined, it was just really, really nice. And it's been really fun for me as you've been talking to discover what that overlap is there. So what you would say to yourself is based probably what you did say to yourself, what you probably did say to yourself was, hey, just keep doing this. Okay, we're gonna get there. And then look what you did, and then you did. You know? It's really cool to look back at those times where we knew things would come together someday, but we didn't know exactly how and when. I've been experiencing a lot of that <laughs> myself too, just personally, like in terms of like this is so much fun. This moment, right? This exact moment in time is so meaningful for me personally on so many levels. Mm -hmm. And to think about, you know, a couple years ago, it's amazing. I knew that I would have this amount of fulfillment and happiness and meaning, um, you know, in a business. But I didn't know exactly how it would look or when it would happen. Mm -hmm. But that mentality was so key. Is what you just described. I also had that. It's like, well, I'm going to do what the best thing is I know to do, and I'm going to keep on doing that. And that's yep. it. Yep. Simple as that. Okay, let's see. Arvid has a question. Hey, Arvid. Okay. How did you arrive at your decision to have an exploration phase? Oh, my God. I'm so excited about this question. <laughs> How do you balance this when you are feeling strong attraction and interest for one woman? We have talked about this a lot, Jara. I'm really excited to hear your thoughts on this. We have. We have talked about it a lot because um, I've, uh, I guess, where to start. Let's see. So I realized I wanted an exploration phase because I had been with one girl for five years, and she was my main girlfriend. That was pretty much most of my dating experience. And when that was over, it kind of flipped my world upside down because I just – figured I would be with her forever, but that wasn't the case. So I, at that point, I didn't know exactly what I wanted. And I remember reading, uh, I don't know if I read it from Sarah, or maybe you told me, Sarah, or something, that uh, uh, basically that you can have kind of an exploration phase where both people really win. It's not done, and it's over, and it's uh, it can still be very very uh, very powerful deep connection with that person it can still feel very exciting it can be a lot of fun it's more playful it's more of a you deciding what aspects of yourself you want to put out there and it's also more of a finding your own vibe finding your own way to connect to the women that you're attracted to so I decided to give that a shot because it, it just sounded like my next phase. I felt like I never had an exploration phase growing up. And, um, and I think it's, it, it was just naturally for me what I should, what I should do. Um, to answer the second question about when you're feeling attraction and interest for a woman, um, it's interesting you bring it up because there's, there's one girl that, as I've been going through this process, that we really connected with. And, uh, I, I didn't know this until I talked to Sarah, but apparently uh, when you're going in more of an exploration phase, you kind of want to keep it down to like seeing this person once a week or so. <laughs> and well, you, exactly. Uh, kind yeah. of like seeing <laughs> Yeah, you kind of do, yeah. Well, yeah, it's just kind of otherwise the hormones go way up and all that stuff, but uh, you go into the honeymoon phase. But anyways, um, I think the way I, I see it right now, is I'm in an exploration phase, but if there is a girl that's out there that really, um, you know, blows me away, I'm open to having a relationship. So that's how I felt about this girl. And then, of course, she moved to Brazil. So um, that's not <laughs> like in two weeks or something crazy. She is coming Correct. back. And it's, and you left it really. It's it's interesting. Like this is 
this is part of what's so interesting about watching things unfold because there are some general things that we can know. Like, of course, we know that when you see different women, especially when this is so new for you, there's going to be, especially if there's just so many things you really like about her, there's going to be some extra mm -hmm. attraction. We just didn't know that it would be the situation where it's sort of long distance and then she's in Brazil right now. That's so crazy. And, um, and, and so then with the anchor, just going back to that, what we talked about was instead of having your anchor be, oh, this woman, that woman, this situation, this fear, this thing, this person from my past said about relationship or some crazy thing, just say, okay, no, what is it that I really want? And you trust yourself, you know, mm -hmm. you really trust yourself. And it is definitely rising to the occasion to really objectively say, do I want to pursue a relationship with this person? Because Correct. you have to realize when you're saying that there's a lot of you that does that is more just like hormonal or situational or just the newness of it. So you have to trust that even though that's there, though, it doesn't negate genuine reasons. So it's very complex to really feel into, OK, OK, is this really something that I want to pursue further? And the great thing about it is you don't have to say, oh, my God, I'm going to marry her. You would just say, you know, I'm interested in seeing her again. OK, I'm interested in seeing her again. OK, and then at some point there's a discussion, you know, and then there's another discussion. And each discussion is frank and open and transparent. Jara, you were beautiful at having that discussion with this woman when you, you know, you said, OK, you know, I think that because we've just barely known each other at all, um, you know, let's just go on our separate ways while you're gone. And then when you come back, if we're both available and if you want to, no pressure, no nothing, if we both want to, we can see each other again then. But yeah. let's not like put that expectation out there. It's a very delicate thing. It really is. It's very mm -hmm. delicate. The whole situation is. Yeah. In any in your case, but just in any situation where you're dating and you're in an exploring phase and then you meet someone you really connect with, it's very delicate to navigate mm -hmm. that for sure. Yeah. And, and you want to be very open and honest about it. I mean, like if, if somebody asks you what you're intentions are or anything like that I mean you just are you're honest about it I'm in a in a dating and playing stage I'm out there I want to have a lot of fun I want to get to know a lot of people and you kind of really set the stage to know because that way you're not like hooking them somebody that really wants a relationship is really not a good match to you right if you're in a yes you know so so you want to be very open and very honest and surprisingly I thought that when I when I did, I thought when I when I was going to do that that I was going to get turned down by a lot of women, but surprisingly, at least the women I've been going out with, kind of feel the same way. So you kind of just if if you make a decision that's what you want, it's really weird how it works out. But you kind of bump into women that want the same thing. I don't it's know how. So true. Yeah. I love that. I remember us talking about that in session. That was so cool. I remember that exact moment where we talked about how. You're not going to, because that was my experience in dating too. I just didn't attract and I wasn't attracted and I didn't sync up with men who just wanted a relationship right now. And I think it's just the vibe that you're in touch with in yourself and the vibe that you're giving out. It, people read it very well. I mean, mm -hmm. it's very interesting. And if you think about it, it's not that crazy because our sixth sense and whatever, like you can feel if somebody's looking at you, even if you can't see them. I mean, we're very connected to each other. Um, it's like no joke. So if that's your vibe and intention and it's crystal clear, then people will be able to pick up on that because we're all way more perceptive than we often give ourselves or each other credit for, especially when we're so clear minded, like we've been talking about this whole time. Um, yeah. Uh, that's that's just a tiny tidbit. We've talked about that so much. We've probably mm -hmm. spent over an hour just on that tiny topic. More than that, two, three hours, at least a couple <laughs> hours. Yep. Okay, one more. This will be our last question. It's from Chris. 
what is the main thing or block that was preventing you from connecting with women before and how come it's so much easier now? It's a great wrap up question. Um, very good question. Uh, I'm going to actually cheat and make it two main things, if that's okay. Yeah, go for it. <laughs> First and foremost, I'm going to go back to the whole vibe thing. The whole, um, uh, like I was being very anxious. My vibe was very anxious in the past. I was very um, uh, confused. I was, I was afraid and, and anxious. So that kind of showed up in my personality and when women around me saw me, it wasn't something they were like attracted to. Like who's really attracted to somebody that's very anxious, you know? Um, <laughs> it's not any of our sexiest moment. We've all had the moments. It's not our sexiest moment. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, uh, unless you want to attract a psychologist in your life, I would say uh, that's a vibe you don't want. So um, that was, I would say that's the main thing is really uh, clearing that vibe up with meditation and, choosing my values that I'm passionate about and then actually pursuing those and actually like uh, going through the process of really becoming those values and seeing them more often and focusing on them. That was the main thing. And it makes things a lot easier now because it becomes, um, how do you say, like just subconscious. It becomes subconscious. It becomes something that you integrate. And then like when I go out dancing now, like I used to, to feel a lot of anxiety and now I feel more excitement now I feel like the fun I feel like I'm in the game now when I'm dancing I feel more confident I feel confident around the, the girl uh, because I've, I've done it before and because it just that's the vibe I choose and that makes it a lot easier so I'm gonna say that's number one um, and then number two thing that was blocking me with connecting with women was touch Again, um, going back to that, like I was taught growing up, um, I grew up like really hardcore Catholic and in Mexico also, which um, and it's like a little bit different uh, in terms of societal viewpoints. But in general, like women are seen as like, oh, you treat them as like the petals in a rose and like they're very delicate and like, you know, don't touch them. So <laughs> like I said before, the more I liked a girl, the less I touched her and the more I was anxious around her because you know, I, I didn't want to screw it up. So um, when I learned that with and that it was part of the whole natural process because that's how we work, that's, you know, how we're wired as physical beings. Um, and when I learned how to do that respectfully and really, really um, open myself up to the, re the response that the women had, it was amazing. It was like flipping on a switch almost like sometimes like just a, a touch would actually like really tells the girl that you're interested in her. And um, for some reason or another, it just made the connection so much easier because you're connecting on a physical level and you're connecting. Um, I don't know. I don't know exactly what the magic is yet, but I just know that really worked. <laughs> so. Oh my God. That's so true. Yeah. So true. You're because connection chemistry is, primarily physical sexual chemistry is primarily physical because sex is primarily a physical function and animals that don't share our same emotions or spiritual intellectual thoughts still share the sexual because we are animals too everybody we're all um we all have that in common so touching is a very physical thing now of course that sparks intellectual thoughts the spiritual connection emotional connection but mm -hmm. it's like this gateway to all of that that's so grounded and so real, this physical touch. And it also says that you're confident because otherwise you wouldn't know how to touch or you wouldn't touch. So the fact that you are and that you're doing it in a sequence that makes logical sense, you're not just like following by every single, I've had clients who, who we started working with me and then they started, and then I it gave them the first touch and first kiss program so that they could just learn that there instead of us working together. I did the same thing with you, Jara. Or no, you already, you already, you already in it before we started working together. Anyway, they are like, well, things have just moved, been moving so fast and I just forgot all the steps, but it worked out. <laughs> you know, you don't have to like do all the steps like crazy. But it's helpful. It's there if you need it. 
And when you start making that connection, it's literally this whole new world opens up. And I've mentioned this in the first touch to first kiss free emails. So all of you guys should get that. If you just sign up for the first touch to first kiss training on the website, you can get that. Um, I think it's, I forget which of the five emails it's in, but um, you know, it's, oh yeah. Oh, I think it's like, what if she shows up to the date dirty and in sweatpants? I think it's like email number four. Okay. So you might remember this email, Jara. So the, the point I was making is, men, you guys are more visual than uh, touch based. So if you see a beautiful woman, it's like, oh my God. Well, when, of course, women, when we see beautiful men, we feel that way too. But when we have a wonderful touch, when a man touches us, that is the same intensity, the same effect. So men and women are different physiologically in this way. So if she were to show up to a date dirty and in sweatpants, that's not really playing up the fact that, you know, she has, she's beautiful. And that, you know, she's beautiful. Um, that's, whoopsies. Sorry about that. <laughs> He's trying to call in. Um, that's not really playing up the fact that she's, that, that you are attracted to her physical appearance. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing right with that. That's just how it is. So might as well enjoy it. Same thing, when you learn how to touch her in a way that feels really good for both of you, that's you showing up looking really good. That's like the equivalent of that because, yeah. because that's what she most responds to. And you experience that firsthand for real, for real. And it's just amazing to have watched what has happened. It has been amazing. And I have this sheet full of my notes all about meditation and how it ties in to what I'm already thinking anyway. And I really appreciate that. And you guys were so fun with your questions and your comments. And I just adore all of you. And um, this was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Me too. It's been great. <laughs> Thanks so much, Jara. Any closing thoughts or comments or suggestions or anything? Well, the only thing I'd say is that, um, I'm very grateful for Sarah and everything she's doing. And I think that a lot of you guys out there are kind of in my shoes uh, or, you know, are, are similar to me. And, and I think this community is, is a great community because, um, like, we, we really care about women. We really like them. We also really respect them. So we're very, we're, we're good. We're respectful, good people. And I think that taking these teachings will make us better people, but also really give um, women a wonderful experience, not just for ourselves, but for them too. So it's kind of really a win, win, win what we're doing here. And I think that uh, I just really encourage you to, um, to meditate and to follow the teachings that Sarah talks about. And, um, and I hope that you can be up. Thank you so much. So fun. It feels like this big party. I don't want to leave. But you know what? We'll have more. We'll have more parties. Um, thanks, everybody. Um, oh, somebody has a technical question. I should just answer this because one of my other clients told me to use this camera. He said to me, Sarah, um, it's great that you're doing webinars, but your camera is not OK, and the audio is not OK, and you need to get this instead. Really appreciated that. Like, thanks, man. I need that. I need that in my life. It's my first time using it. It's really good. So it is a Logitech C920. Let me just make sure. Um, it's a lot. It's it's an HD Pro webcam C920. That's what it is. And I got it on Amazon, and it is really good. And um, so there you go. Yay for all of our technical sides and appreciation <laughs> of great technology. <laughs> so. Okay, well, all of you will have a wonderful night. Um, Jara, have a great night. Thank you so much again. Uh, I look forward to our next session. And um, everyone have fun exploring meditation. And I'll see you guys soon. All right. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.